Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. It's a little book, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. You remember Lamentations is a funeral dirge, and the prophet Jeremiah went up on a hill, and he, he stood overlooking the city as it was being taken by King Nebuchadnezzar. And as the city of Jerusalem fell, he, he broke down and he wept. And this is his words that he wrote as his heart was breaking over seeing his people being led away into captivity. You remember they went into Babylonian captivity for how many years? Seventy mm -hmm. years. The, the children of the southern kingdom of Judah went into captivity and the prophet Jeremiah is lamenting. He is weeping over seeing his people being taken into captivity. But right in the middle of this funeral dirge of this this morning time that the prophet Jeremiah is, is experiencing and is writing about, he says these words in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Well, you know, the devil tried to kill me last Friday, but he lost. <laughs> because my God is greater. My God is greater. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth me. He is faithful and true. And I, I just praise him this night that I am here and that I am well and that I am able to stand and speak and proclaim the holy written word of God. And it was certainly of the Lord's mercies that I was not consumed last Friday, I can assure you. I have never experienced anything like that in my life. And God's mercy brought me through. And it was of his mercy that I was not consumed. And all week long, it's just been rolling over and over and over in my spirit about the mercy of the Lord. And I just couldn't get away from it. So we're going to talk about the mercy of God tonight. Amen. And I am so excited to share with you what I've been studying about, about the mercies of the Lord. If you look in verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies. That word mercy in the Hebrew is Hesed, if you look it up, it's spelled C-H-E-C-E-D, but it's pronounced Hesed, the mercy of the Lord. It means goodness, kindness, faithfulness, and mercy. Woohoo! It is of the Lord's goodness. It is of the Lord's kindness. It is of the Lord's faithfulness. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning and great is His faithfulness to you and to me. And I tell you, it, God's mercies are showering us every day, aren't they? We experience God's mercy every day and we take it so for granted. The, the scripture talks about mercy all through the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Jesus said, blessed are the what? Merciful. For what? They shall obtain mercy. Yes. All through the scriptures, the word of God talks about the mercy of God. Did you know that David, the psalmist David, talks so much about the mercy of God? Do you know that the word mercy is found 100 times in the book of Psalms? 100 times. And the word mercies, plural for mercy, is found 17 times in the book of Psalms. And we're going to spend some time in the book of Psalms. So I want you to turn to Psalms 145. Psalms 145. This psalm is called David's Psalm of Praise. Psalms 145. If you have a good reference Bible, underneath that heading of Psalms 145, you will see the, the caption. It reads, David's Psalm of Praise. And 
In Psalms 145, beginning in verse 8, the scripture says, The Lord is gracious and what? Full of compassion, slow to anger, and what? Of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. That includes me. That includes you. The tender mercies of the Lord are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power, the mercy of the Lord. And verse 9, look at it. The Lord is good to all. How many of you can say the Lord is good to you? <laughs> yes. I can put both hands yes. up on that. The Lord is good to me. Yes. Verse 11. We are to speak of God's glory. And we're to talk about His power. And we're to talk about His mercy. Why? Because God Himself talks about His mercy. Did you realize that? I want you to turn to the book of Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34. Exodus 34, beginning in verse 5. The Word of God says, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed by, passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. This is what God is saying about Himself. He is saying, I am gracious. I am long-suffering, which means slow to anger. Aren't you glad that our, our God is a loving God and He is slow to anger? Mm -hmm. If He wasn't, none of us would be here tonight. Amen. Would we? Right. But He is gracious. He is long-suffering. He is slow to anger. And He is abundant in goodness and in truth. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed. This is God's own words. He said, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious. The Hebrew name for the Lord there is Yehovah. Y-E-H-O-V-A-H. -E it means the self-existent one, the eternal one, Jehovah. It's the Jewish national name for God. The Lord, God, is gracious and merciful. What's the background for these verses? Who is God talking to when He is saying this about Himself? That He is, he is a God that's merciful and long-suffering. Who's he talking to? He's talking to Moses. How do we know? Well, if you look back in chapter 33, beginning in verse 12, we see the word says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found what? Grace in my sight. Which means favor. Remember we learned in our study of favor that there are nine Hebrew words for the word favor in the Old Testament. And there's one Greek word for the word favor in the New Testament. And some of the, of the meanings of the Hebrew words for favor are grace, to be gracious, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, peace, and mercy. Mercy. When you talk about the favor of the Lord, you're also talking about the mercy of the Lord. Look at verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace or favor in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, and that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. Moses cried out and said that I may know thee. That was the cry of Moses' heart. And that was the cry of the apostles Paul's heart in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. You can just jot that down if you're taking notes. The apostle Paul cried out and he said that I may know him 
and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. That was the cry of Paul's heart. That was the cry of Moses' heart, that I may know thee. And that's the cry of my heart, that I may know thee, O oh God. I don't want to know about you. I don't know, want to just read about you. I don't want to hear sermons preached about Sick you. I don't want to just hear somebody else talk about you and run about you that way. I want to know you yes. personally. I want to know you intimately. I want to have a close, intimate fellowship and walk with my Lord and my Master and my God. I want to know Him. And that's the Master I cry in my heart just like it was Moses and just like it was Paul that I may know Thee. Oh, I wish we had time to read all of this passage. But skip down to verse 18. And He said, I beseech Thee, shew me Thy glory. Moses said, God, I want to see your glory. Verse 19, And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim, What? The name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. God said, I will make all my goodness to pass before thee. What does God say His glory is? Now, Mo cried out for God's glory in verse 18. He wanted to see God's glory. And what did God say? I'll cause my goodness to pass before thee. God calls His goodness His glory. And any time we experience the goodness of God, we are experiencing His glory. Now that we've got the background for this, this passage, you, you know the rest of the story, how God said, no man can see my face and live. But it, He said, Mo, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock, and when I pass by, I'll put my hand up, and when I pass by, you can see my back parts or my backside. And, but you can't see my face. So God said to Moses, you're going to see me. You're going to see my goodness. You're going to see my glory. And that's not all. When I'm passing by you, I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to tell you something. And what was it that God spoke to Moses as he place Moses in that cleft of the rock and as God put his hand out and walked by Moses and all Moses could see of God's glory was his backside as he went before Moses. And as God spoke a word to Moses, the most important thing that God wanted Moses to know is what he spoke. And what did he speak? We read it in chapter 34. In verses 5 and 6, let's read it again. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. That's what God told Moses he would do back in chapter 33, verse 19. God said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And that's what God is doing in chapter 34. In verse 5, he descended in a cloud. He stood there, and God began to speak, and he began to proclaim his name. Verse 6, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. That was the most important thing about himself that God wanted Moses to know is that he was a God of mercy. I want you to turn to the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Oh, there's so much in the Word of God pertaining to God's mercy. 2 Chronicles chapter 5. When Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord, they were dedicating the temple, the house of, of God. They were dedicating it to the Lord. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, in verses 13 and 14, the Word of God says, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard, 
in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments and music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his what? Mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. What? For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. When the people began to worship God, and when they began to praise Him for His mercy, God showed up in a cloud of His glory. Why? Because God Himself inhabits, He dwells in the praises of His people. We know that because the psalmist David says so in Psalms 22, 3. He talks about God inhabiting the praises of His people. So when the glory of God filled the house of God, the priests could not stand to minister. They fell down before God's awesome presence and His glory. But God's God's glory didn't come until the people began to praise God for His mercy. His mercy. Let's look at another example. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Here in this same book, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse 21. King Jehoshaphat, he had appointed singers to go before the army of the children of Israel. They were going out to battle. And you would think that the army would put their most valiant soldiers out in front, don't you? You would think that the most fierce warriors would be placed out front of the army to meet the enemy first. But no, that's not what they did. They sent the praisers out first. Ahead of the army, they sent the choir out first. Mm -hmm. And when they began to sing about God's mercy, let's read about what happened. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. What were the praisers supposed to sing about? The mercy of the Lord. They were to sing about his mercy that endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies, fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead body and with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Think about it. Israel didn't even have to lift their sword. Why? Because God fought that battle for them. Why? Because they were singing about His mercy. And when they began to sing about His mercy, God said, Hey, I can't help it. I'm going down in the midst of them, and I'm going to fight for them, and I'm going to win this battle for them because they're praising me, and they're singing to me, and they're praising me for my mercy that endures forever. And God showed up on the scene, and the enemy armies turned on one another, and they killed each other. And the children of Israel didn't even have to unsheath their weapon and draw their sword because God Almighty had fought and won the battle for them. Why? Because they were singing about His mercy. They were praising God that His mercy is endured forever. Woohoo! Hallelujah! And our weapon that we are to use against 
Yes, the enemy of praise is the number one weapon. That's what I was doing back there a while ago before it started. I was trying to be quiet and trying to be low, but I was praising and worshiping God for His holiness, for His mercy, and just thanking Him for being here with us tonight. I was loving on the Lord. And what, you, what happens when you love on God and when you praise Him for His mercies? He shows up on the scene. Hallelujah. He's the same God today as He was in the Old Testament. And He said, I'm the same yesterday, for today and forever. He is God and He changes not. So if He would show up on the scene in the Old Testament when His people would begin to sing and to praise Him and sing about His mercy, then He'll show up today. He'll show up in our lives, whatever we're facing when we begin to just stop and get our eyes off of our circumstances and get our eyes on Him and begin to praise Him and to thank Him for His mercies that endure forever. Hallelujah! Now I want you to turn back to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 37. Psalms 37. I just want to take you through just a few of the scriptures in Psalms. Like I said, David mentions the word mercy a hundred times in the, in the book of Psalms. And we're just going to touch on just a few of them. Just with some of my favorite scriptures on the mercy of God. Psalms chapter 37, verse 21. The scripture says, The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth what? Mercy and giveth. I don't know about you, but I want to pay my debts. If I borrow something, I'm going to pay it back. Why? Because it's the righteous that shows mercy and gives. I don't want to be considered a wicked person that borrows something and doesn't ever return it. No. The righteous show mercy and give, but it's the wicked that borrows and does not return it or doesn't pay it again. But I want to be the righteous, don't you? I want to be the righteous that gives and shows mercy. Psalms 59 and verse 16. Psalms 59. We're just going to go through the Psalms just for, just for a few minutes. And we're going to read about the mercy of God. Psalms 59, verse 16. The scripture says, But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my what? Defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that, that God is your defense? God came to my defense last Friday. I'm here to tell you He did. He fought that battle for me because I wasn't capable of fighting it for myself. Do you ever get hit? Do you ever get knocked down to the point that you can't pray? That you can't stand and fight your own battle? No. But when that time comes, when you're not flat on your face, then God's mercy will come to the rescue. Because right. the psalmist David said, I will sing for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. The psalmist David said, I'm going to sing to you, God, for you're my defense and you're the God of mercy. Hallelujah. Psalms 86. 86 and verse 5. We're just touching on just a few of the psalms where the psalmist David talked about the mercy of God. Psalms 86 and verse 5. The psalmist David wrote and said, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and what plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that God's not a stingy God? He is plenteous in mercy. And all we have to do to receive his mercy is call upon him. Isn't that simple? God doesn't require something hard of us, does he? Just call on him. 
And God said, I'll show you my mercy. Yes. Here in this same chapter, in, in Psalms 86, verse 15, the psalmist David said, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and what? Plenteous in mercy and truth. I am so glad that my God is a God that's full of compassion. That's right. And he's gracious. And he's long-suffering. He's slow to anger. And he is plenteous. He has plenty of mercy that he showers us with. Psalms 100. Psalms 100 and verse 5. We're just taking a little trip through the book of Psalms tonight. Just a few of the many, many times that the psalmist David mentions the mercy of the Lord. Psalms 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endureth to all generations. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord is good. We serve a good God. He is our good Lord. Remember we learned that a couple of years ago. He is our good Lord. His mercy. Does it last just for a little while and runs out? No, it's everlasting. And His truth endureth to all generations. Psalms 102, verse 13. 102, 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. It is time now for you to walk in God's favor. The set time, yea, the set time is come. Why? Because God has mercy on us, His children. And He desires to give us favor every day. And I want His favor, don't you? What a glorious study the favor of God was. We spent several weeks studying about God's favor. That is such an awesome privilege that God bestows on us, His children. Why? Because He shows us His mercy. Right. His mercy. Psalms 103 and verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Over and over and over and over throughout the Psalms, David is talking about the mercy of the Lord, about how gracious he is, and about him, him being slow to anger, and oh, he is plenteous or plentiful in showing his mercy to his children. Psalms 103, verses 11 and 12. Oh, I love this one. This is one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed their transgressions from us. Why does God forgive us of our sins or our transgressions? Because of his mercy. Because of His mercy, as high as the heaven, He is above the earth. So great is God's mercy toward them that fear Him, that reverence Him, that respect Him, that love Him. As high as the heaven. Think about that. That's, that's pretty high, isn't it? And that is how great God's mercy is to us, His children. It extends, it reaches as far as the earth to the heavens it themselves. It's almost too much for us to comprehend and grasp, isn't it? The mercy, the mercy, the mercy of God. Psalms 118. Psalms 118, beginning in verse 4. You know, I talk about the mercy of God often, and when I pray, I'm always praying about and thanking God for His mercy. But this week, it's just been so real in my life because I experienced such a great touch of God's mercy last Friday. Psalms 118, 
beginning in verse 4. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? And I have to remind myself of this at work especially. What can men do unto me? Because the Lord is on my side. I'd lot rather have God on my side than, than me or man, hadn't you? And what are those that fear the Lord to say? His mercy endures forever. And when we call upon the Lord in distress, verse 5 tells us that God answered the psalmist David. And he'll answer us. And he'll bring us into a large place, a place of victory. Why? Because he's on our side. And so we don't have to fear what man can do in us. Right. Hallelujah. Psalms 138 and verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Aren't you glad that God is going to perfect that which concerns us? I don't know about you, but I've got a whole lot of areas in my life that need perfecting, I, that need the touch of the Lord. There's a whole lot more of me than there is of God's nature within me. And I want this flesh man, this outer man, this this part of me that you see, I want this flesh man to die so that the life of the Lord that's in my spirit can come forth. Paul said, I die daily. And that's what our flesh, we're to die to the lust, the desires, the sin of the flesh, and we're to allow the, the spirit of God that dwells in us to come <coughs> forth. And the Lord will perfect that. Every area that concerns us. I'm glad, aren't you? I want him to perfect every area in me and remove every area within me that's not like him and that is not a part of his nature. If you're taking notes, jot the scripture down. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. The scripture says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. And he says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. What a love that our God loves us with. He loved us enough to send his only son to die on the cross for us. What a love our Father has for us to give his only son for you and for me. Why? Because our God is rich in mercy and in his great love toward us. And not only is God rich in mercy, but his mercies are new every morning. You remember we read it back in Lamentations when we first, first started this study. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. God's mercies are new every morning. If you're jotting notes, if you're taking notes, jot down this scripture. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, which is the throne of favor, that we may obtain mercy and find grace or favor to help in time of need. You and I, because of the finished work of Christ, the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we accept Him as, as our Lord and Savior, He covers our sins with His own blood, and therefore we can come boldly, boldly before the, the throne of grace or the throne of favor and receive mercy and find grace or favor to help in the time of need. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we can come to the throne of favor? Mm -hmm and obtain mercy and help. When we sing 
about God's mercy. And when we talk about God's mercy, faith will begin to rise up within our heart because we're talking the Word. How does the faith come? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when we begin to speak about the mercy of God, when we begin to talk and sing about the mercy of God, faith, when we speak those scriptures, when we read those scriptures out loud, faith will begin to rise up within our hearts concerning this area of mercy. And, that, and it's through faith that we approach God. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. And we're to come to God and pray and believe in faith. And how we're going to get that faith by hearing the Word of God. And when we speak the Word, and when we sing the Word, especially the Word of God concerning God's mercy, faith will rise up within our hearts so that we can come boldly before His throne. Now I want to end by reading Psalms 136. Psalms 136. We may not read the entire psalm, but oh, this is just such a wonderful, <coughs> wonderful passage. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Psalms chapter 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endureth forever. Look at it. At the end of every verse, what is it talking about? The mercy of God that endures forever. Join me in repeating His mercy endures forever as we finish reading portions of this song. Verse 4, To Him who alone doeth great wonders, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that by wisdom made the heavens, for His mercy endureth forever. To Him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule the night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. Woo! What about that? Verse 11, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. Yes, hallelujah. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. Ha <laughs> ha, glory. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. <laughs> Verse 17, to him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Zion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for a heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever. And had redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Woohoo! Oh, God, give us this same revelation about your mercy, about your goodness, about your kindness, about your faithfulness that you reveal to the writer of this psalm. For your mercy endureth forever. And we give thanks unto you, O Lord, 
We give thanks unto the God of gods. We give thanks unto the Lord of lords. For your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. 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 His mercy endureth forever. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you for your mercy.